right. Um, you have noticed we've just had a change of office officer to my left, so I'm just going to ask him to introduce himself. Uh, thank you, Chair. I'm Justin Turvey. I'm the Lead Officer for Development Management. Right. On to the second application then, which is Agenda Item 90 on page 39, page 52 Reading Road. A full application for supported affordable housing consisting of nine apartments. It's before the committee as the applicant is a working housing limited, which is owned by the council. It's recommended for approval, subject to conditions as laid out in the agenda, and the case officer is Bhuja Kumar. Over to you. Thank you, Chairman. Fifteen years Reading Road is located to the west of Wakefield Town Centre at the junction of Reading Road and Station Approach. The existing building is two storeys in height and detached with a pitched roof. There is a single storey covered area and a detached modular building to the side of the site. The application is for the redevelopment of the site to provide supported living accommodation for young vulnerable people aged between 16 and 25, which would replace the current accommodation provided at Seaford Court in Wokingham. <coughs> the proposed building will be in a similar location to the existing building, albeit with a significantly larger footprint. The proposed building would have a width of 11.5 metres and a depth of 16 metres, compared with the existing building being 10 metres in width and 8 metres in its depth. Although the proposed building would roughly have a rectangular footprint, the front gable would project forward by 1.9 metres, which is a similar feature to the existing building and neighbouring properties, and to the rear there will be, a sing there will be single storey extensions to either side of the two storey gable. We can see the single storey and the two storey rear projection in the side elevations, the top plan is the elevation facing 54 Reading Road. The roof plan, the roof plane would slope away from the neighbouring property and the proposed building would be located 1.7 metres away from the common boundary. The bottom elevation is the proposed view from the station in road. Due to its sighting on, the corner, on a corner plot, the adjacent mixed uses to the east of the site, it is considered that the application site lends itself to providing a landmark building which would address both street frontages. The proposed bulk and mass of the building, although notably larger than the neighbouring properties, is not considered to result in any harm to the local character and will be suitable for this corner plot. The accommodation itself would comprise of two self-contained ground floor units with disabled access, seven bed-sit rooms on the first and second floor, and communal kitchen and living areas on the ground floor. The site will be managed by a housing management company who will provide at least one on-site staff member 24 hours, seven days a week, and the scheme has been designed to include overnight staff accommodation. There will be four parking spaces and one motorcycle parking space along the eastern boundary of the front of the site. The bin store will be located on the western side of the plot to the front of the dwelling. A cycle shelter will be provided to the, within the rear private amenity area. As existing, the site is well, well landscaped with TPOs to the far end of the site. The Council's Trees and Landscape Officer has advised that additional planting to the front and side of the site can be secured by condition to enhance this green roof. As advised before, the proposed building would maintain a distance of 1.7 metres from the common boundary with 54 Reading Road. The distance of 3.8 metres would be maintained from the single storey side extension um, along the side elevation of 54 Reading Road and a distance of 5.5 metres from the two storey bulk of the same neighbouring property. The site faces northeast and the proposal would not result in significant loss of light or overbearing to the neighbouring property to warrant re refusal on this basis. In respect of overlooking, the two first floor side windows would serve bathrooms and the window between the ground and first floors would serve a staircase. All of these windows would be obscure based as detailed on the plans and secured by condition 11. As such, there is considered, considered to be no harm in respect of overlooking and privacy. Environmental health officers have asked for a condition to secure protective measures from noise and vibration for future occupiers due to the site's location to the north of the railway station and the new multi-storey car park. This has been included as condition 12 in the committee report. The top photo here is of the site from Reading Road, with filtered views towards the neighbouring properties. Being green roof, these properties are well screened even in the winter, and it's likely that the screening to be put forward would do the same for the site. The bottom photo is looking in a northerly direction from station approach, where we can see the high waste buffer already in place. The landscaping here is yet to mature, but will provide sufficient screening towards the building when it's grown. 
Within the members' update, there is an amendment to Condition 4 relating to the submission of materials. Also, there is an additional condition on the hours of construction. There have been additional comments submitted by Councillor Murphy, who has emailed his full support for the proposal. Also, the neighbour has resubmitted their objections and expanded on the issues relating to residential amenity, highway safety and character of the proposal. Subject to the amended condition, additional condition, I would recommend the application for approval. The um, registered speakers for this, I've got Darren Toes from Wokingham Housing Limited and Simon Price from Wokingham Borough Council. Are you coming up to present together? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> so it will be three minutes in total, but the buzzer will go when your time's up. Okay. Um, Press the button so we can. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, from a Wokingham Borough Council perspective, this new provision is much needed affordable, supported accommodation for the younger people in the borough. It would be an upgrade to our existing preservation in Seaford Court. It's good location for transport and access to the town centre, <coughs> and it's a priority for Wokingham Borough Council as per our younger person's housing strategy. This will be a launch pad for young people who may have vulnerabilities and would increase their chances to thrive in their future lives. Yeah, uh, working in housing, you've been commissioned by uh, WBC to design and build out the uh, supported housing scheme that Simon has touched upon. Our proposals are to demolish the existing building and replace this with a sympathetic scheme which takes account of the surrounding building forms and environment. And we believe our architects have successfully achieved this by adopting a gable to the Reading Road elevations, which echo the style of the existing houses, and secondly, using materials that reflect the surrounding buildings. In terms of building height, the eaves and ridge height broadly align with those of 54 and the building we're demolishing. And we feel our architects have also made clever use of the roof space to provide additional accommodation without increasing the built form. The new station approach has left us with a corner plot and has allowed us to consider a different architectural scale within the constraints of the surrounding buildings and this has enabled us to design a larger unit within the full width of the plot. Having said that, the pro scheme is larger but the actual submitted design is only 5% bigger in footprint than the existing building. Um, access to the site is via the existing access arrangements on Ready Road and in accordance with uh, the discussions we've had with the highways department and the building type in use, we believe, is provide adequate parking and cycle provision. Finally, we're keen, we're keen to start on site experience as soon as possible. We have a program start date for the end of March, subject to planning approval, and we hope you'll favour the upon our application. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Members, Michelle, Michelle. I have spoken to the actual person who owns 54 and 56 previously, not within the recent past. But they had problems with station micro construction, and they have two small children. I would like to make sure that we keep the noise down as much as possible. Even consider doing no work during some of the school holidays as well, because the children are pretty much disturbed by all the noise they had at station lake road. I'd like to not have them get disturbed again. Even though we do need this housing, I wonder if they can be at least considerate as much as possible. Thank you, Chair. The work is um, scheduled to start as soon as possible, as I understand it, so hopefully it should avoid um, sort of, uh, summer holidays, as you say. And I, I think we've proposed a um, construction method statement condition uh, to cover uh, noise and disturbance and noise concerns. Any other member wishing to pose a question? All right, John. Thank, thank you, Chairman. Um, I welcome this, obviously, to see if the court being closed if it leaves the council with a gap with the um, accommodation for, for, for single um, homeless people. Um, the only question I've really got to ask the, the council, uh, or the officers, is um, does it make our parking standards? It is quite a difficult position where it is on the Reading Road. And there is a comment here about vehicles turning and parking. You've got have people backing out onto the road there. So does it make our parking standards? Um, in terms of the development in front of us, it's classed with a sui generis land use, and as such, obviously, it's, it doesn't kind of follow your normal residential or business kind of um, uses. Um, therefore, looking at the, uh, the scheme in front of us and what it is, 
Um, obviously, the parking that's been provided is probably actually more than is needed, but we've obviously taken what was already at the last the last unit. Um, and in terms of the access, the access is existing. Um, there was some consideration to look at coming off of station approach itself. But obviously, as far as we're concerned, you know, the station approach is delivering a strategic function in the town. And for the delivery of um, a standard type unit with only four parking spaces, it was something that was much vastly acceptable to have on the existing access than it was obviously to create a new one. The parking layer itself has also, also been designed as well with um, turning on sites, so there is no reason for them to have to reverse out into the public highway. Um, and for that reason, the highways are, are happy with what's there. Yeah, like John, I, I welcome this one. Um, I felt that some of the comments about the design and the appearance were a bit unfair because I think they've done a great job of trying to bring it into the, the street scene, the brick detailing on the external walls, etc. So, you know, I fully support it. Right, if there are no other questions, it's um, set on page 40 for approval with the conditions. There's one amendment in the members update and one additional condition. So if those members in favour of approving this application please show. Okay, and those against? I'm not saying because I've spoken to the residents in the past about noise problems, so I'm not talking to this. Okay, thank you. So that application is approved. Thank you. item on the agenda then is item 91 on page 65 which is Beechwood Primary School and it's a full application for three classrooms, ex extension to the staff room, new security fence, pathways and alteration to the, to the parking and it's before the committee as it's a major application and of course it's also the council is the applicant and I also went to this school but it was many years ago so I don't have to declare an interest. <laughs> Recommended for approval of subject and conditions, once again, the same case officer. Thank you, Chairman. The application site is within a major development location in the settlement of Woodley. Woodley Precinct is located to the north and west of the site and to the east and south of residential dwellings. The existing building is a single story flat roof building, uniformly faced with curtain walling and timber clad panels, typical of 1950 school. The proposed extensions would accommodate an increase of pupil numbers by 15 per school year over a seven year period, with pupil numbers raising to 420 by 2020. The, the extensions would comprise of three single storey infill mono pitched extensions to create classrooms and corridors, and a single storey mono pitched extension to the existing staff room. There will be a new pathway along the northern side of the site, which would have a new security fencing to allow safe and secure access for pupils. The car park would be extended to the northwest of the site, and scooter parking would also be made available on site. The extensions would be of an appropriate size and scale in relation to the main school building. They would largely infill areas within the main school complex and would not extend significantly away from the original building. The roof of the extension will be flat sloping roofs with heights between 4 and 5.5 metres, providing more interesting roofscape for the school building without resulting in any detriment to the same. In respect to character and appearance, the proposed extensions would relate to the exi existing use and would not result in any harm or detriment. The size and scale of the extensions will be reflective of the original building and will be considered acceptable. The majority of the works would relate to internal reconfiguration of the internal layout to ensure that no classrooms are without windows. The internal rooms here seen in the floor plan are storerooms, offices, toilets or corridors. Only one, group of, only one group room would be located internally without any windows. Here are some of the photographs of where the extensions are proposed to be located. <coughs> the proposal will result in the loss of three trees, two category B trees and one category C tree two of which are proposed to be replaced. WBC Trees and Landscape Officers have advised that two replacement trees are sufficient in this instance. Condition 5 requires the details of the replacement trees. Here are three illustrations of the proposed extensions demonstrating the relative size and scale of the same. 
The site is in a sustainable location, however, the proposal includes an increase in the number of parking spaces by four to the north of the site. Also proposed is scooter parking. There is proposed to be no increase in the number of cycle spaces as the existing 40 spaces are underutilised. Condition 13 requires the submission of an updated travel plan, which would require the cycle spaces to be monitored. If more spaces are required, then this would be carried out in line with the details submitted. The proposed extensions would not result in any harm in respect of overlooking loss of light or overbearing due to the siting of the extensions within the main school. The closest residential properties in Ambleside Close would be located 25 metres away and the properties along Arundel Close would be located 45 metres away. Mm -hmm. Within the members' update, there is an amendment to condition 10 relating to ecology. An additional condition on the hours of construction has also been included. There are also amendments to the report. Subject to the amended condition report and additional condition, I recommend the application for approval. Thank you. Right, we have one um, registered speaker for this, which is the, um, the school's programme manager. Um, I apologise for not saying your name, but I was going to struggle. That's okay, I'll say it. <laughs> I'm Andrew Sharma, Schools Programme Manager, and I'm speaking in support of the Beechwood Primary School expansion. The Council has a statutory duty to ensure that there are sufficient school places in the borough for every child. In January 2016, the Council's Executive agreed the Primary School Plan and Strategy 2016 to 2018, and the Primary Strategy Implementation Plan Phase 1. Woodley was identified as an area where rising roles meant that additional capacity would be required. The strategy identified a need for 45 additional school places per year or 315 primary school places in total. In this area, um, Beechwood School was identified as a suitable site for expansion. If if approved, the school will provide 15 additional school places per year or 105 additional places across all age groups to increase this admission number from 45 to 60 and the capacity from 315 to 420 places. One of the key drivers for the proposed increase is that planning consent has been granted for nearly a thousand homes in the area. The number of pupils generated per year by these new homes will be dependent on how quickly these homes are built. Um, these sites are active developments currently. In the long term, the new ha homes are likely to generate over 30 pupils per year over the next eight years, and in the short term will generate significantly more than this. Beachwood, was, Beachwood Primary School was identified as a suitable site for the expansion because the school has a central location in Woodley, a large site area, and the school made representations that it would be improved by being able to offer single age school or group teaching, increasing to 60 children per year group, which means that the school could have a more effective average class size of 30 and would teach in a single age group classes. The proposed works of uh, the proposed program of work enables the school to accommodate a permanent increase in pupil numbers. The proposals include new classrooms formed by infilling spaces in between existing blocks, improved <coughs> and alignment facilities, improved staff facilities, and enhanced car parking arrangements. The scheme has been designed through a close partnership with the school leadership and the governors. I therefore hope that the committee can support a scheme that has been designed in partnership, improves an existing school and creates the school places necessary for a growing population. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. Right. Michelle. Oh, good, sorry. I'm not a board member, but obviously it's a member of the uh, Woodley. Um, it's mentioned the increase in the uh, uh, population of Woodley is expanding, and this is a much needed um, uh, project. There's been no uh, objections from Woodley Town Council. They see it as a positive move. So uh, for that reason, I would support it as well. 
the building itself seems to be causing no problems to the local uh, community. Uh, I could only see it as a positive, so for that reason, I would support it. Thank you. Michelle? My question is parking. Uh, how many are the existing parking spaces at this point? How many employees do they have? And four uh, more parking spaces it doesn't sound a whole lot for um, adding the equipment for about, uh, probably going to be about six or seven teachers or something like this that we need to add. Um, in terms of the current school and what's there existing, that's obviously existing and we can't go back and obviously assess that. How, how many more? How many more? Well, in terms of the <laughs> in terms of what, in terms of the, the bits I've got in front of me, uh, mm -hmm. in terms of the school, the application that's being provided, the, the expansion, generates four additional staff, three full-time and one part-time, and as a result of that, they're providing four parking spaces, which is in, in line with the council's parking standards. So they're, provide, they're required to provide one per full-time equivalent staff member. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the existing, I believe there is, is bringing it to fifth, so it's going from 29 full-time staff to 32. Um, in terms of the parking on site, it's also on page 70. Um, and it's gone from existing parking spaces to 28, and it's increasing it to 32. So it's broadly in line with the council standards anyway, from the old school to the new school. In terms of pupils, we don't have a guidance for, for that, and obviously there's a travel plan in place um, with this school currently. The school's also working for updating the travel plan currently with our travel plan team. Cycle parking, my view is the cycle park is a little bit low. However, they are providing uh, scooter parking, which from my own experience is that primary schools seem to be increasing scooter parking and the access for scooters quite incredibly at a good fast pace, which is kind of scary. Uh, and they're providing 35 of those, which will be reviewed also through the travel plan and monitored. My understanding as well is there will be 10 cycle parking spaces provided for staff as well, which is a good bonus to hopefully try and reduce the need for them to come their cars. Lots of luck with the parking. I haven't been near a school yet where it hasn't been overrun in the neighbourhoods around there by uh, people having to drop off their children and go to work. So it's going to be an interesting experience to live around there. Thank you. Um, it's talking about fleeting is ready for September of this year. Yeah. Would the construction take place presumably during the summer months uh, or rather than during the earlier time? That's what the um, agent has advised, that the works would commence um, during the summer months and the extensions would be complete or ready for September. So you're not expecting any sort of construction vehicles on site at the same time as any lessons or two? We're not, but we have touched a condition in the construction management plan that would um, outline hours of delivery, any construction vehicles that may overrun. Thank you. John? John. Yes, just expanding on that, um, I'd like to know, um, will the travel plan be in place before the building starts? The travel plan that's been updated should be adopted by September, so we are hoping that it's at least before us, before September, if not in September. And when the school opens, that's when they come to the use of the parking, the cycle parking, the car parking, and the scooter parking. Just one more. I mean, if, you're, if the building's going on over the summer holidays, can we make sure that any construction vehicles or people working on the site parked in the school and not on the roads outside. Are there any more questions, members? Okay, well we have the recommendation so on page 66 to approve <coughs> with the conditions there in the members update. There's one amendment to condition 10 and the additional one or number 19. So all those in favour of passing this application, please show. And that is unanimous. This application is passed. Thank you.
On the, the agenda item number 92 then, which is page 89, it's the FERS at Carters Hill. The application is for a replacement of existing roof lights with dormer windows and the erection of a raised terrace. It's before the committees, it's been listed by the Ward Councillor, Gary Cowan. The application is recommended for refusal as set out on page 90. And so members attended a site visit on Friday. And I'll just reiterate that John will not be participating whatsoever in this um, application and just be sitting here. I'll hand over to the case officer, Rosie Rogers. Thank you, Chairman. Good evening, members, ladies and gentlemen. Um, just to reiterate, this application is before the planning committee as it's been listed by Councillor Gary Cowan in the event that the recommendation is for refusal. The application site is sited on the north side of Park Corner Lane in the countryside location. It comprises a detached stable garage block with first floor and silly residential accommodation over and is sited adjacent to the main two-storey residential dwelling known as the Furs. You can see that one. I did label it on a larger scale plan. Um, together both of the, the residential annex and the main dwelling are located on a good plot, good sized plot. They front onto Carter's Hill, an unadopted road, and there are extensive views both in countryside on all sides of the site. And that is a, a view of the main house from Park Corner Lane. And Sorry, my camera angle wasn't quite wide enough to show both of it, but it shows the main house, and you can just see the roof of the detached outbuilding adjacent to it. So that puts the two buildings in, in context with one another. Um, if I could just give a brief history of the site for those members that weren't able to attend the site visit. Um, the existing detached stable garage block was granted approval in 2003 with storage accommodation at first floor level as a replacement for a previous outbuilding on the site. The first floor accommodation was subsequently converted in 2004 to form ancillary residential accommodation without planning permission, and a number of roof lights were inserted in the roof space. The applicant's son has been using this annex accommodation ancillary to the main house since 2004. A certificate of lawful existing use was subsequently granted on the 16th of August 2016 under planning reference 161368 for use of the first floor as residential annex accommodation over the detached garage stable block ancillary to the main house known as the first for a continuous period of over 10 years. So the applicant was able to demonstrate that that had taken place. Uh, roof lights have been installed for more than four years, therefore we're immune from enforcement action, so no action was taken on that. Uh, that shows the existing elevations as it stands at the moment, existing floor plans, and a view of the existing building from the internal courtyard area, which shows it as it stands today. The current application seeks to make further change to the external appearance of the building with the replacement of some of the existing roof lights with dormer extensions and the creation of a first floor terrace. That's proposed plans and innovation. So the proposal is to replace the roof lights with six pitched roof dormers and one flat roof dormer to increase the floor space to the bedroom, bathroom, kitchen and main living room. The existing volume of the building is 505 cubic metres and the proposed volume will be 568 cubic metres, an increase of 12.5% above the volume of the existing building. The proposed dormers will be positioned marginally below the ridge height. They are considered to be overly bulky, overly bulky and would appear as dominant features within the roof space and out of keeping with the style of this existing building Giving its, given its countryside location. They would give the converted stable stroke garage block the top heavy appearance which would draw attention to the building in this countryside setting. It is considered that this increase in scale, form and mass of the roof space significantly changes the existing character and external appearance of the building away from that of a subservient detached outbuilding to a building with a more dominant and urbanised appearance, causing harm to the visual amenity of the area and the openness of the surrounding countryside. 
The proposal also includes the provision of an enclosed raised terrace area to the southwestern corner of the building at a height of 2.2 metres above ground level and with a depth of 5.5 metres. This would extend the footprint of the building to the north of the site, away from the existing building and towards the open countryside. It's considered that this additional element would result in a further inappropriate increase in scale, form and footprint of the building, causing additional harm to the openness of the countryside, whilst at the same time detracting from the subservient nature of the building. view of the side elevation as it stands at the moment from the existing garden area. One of the points made by the applicant is that he has advised this terrace area is required to provide an area of private rear amenity space. However, as you can see from this photo, there is a secluded private rear amenity space with a raised deck and summer house just out of the edge of the photo within easy reach of the annex accommodation. Furthermore, it must be stressed the applicant has provided no supporting information with the application to justify the need for the proposed changes to, this, to the external appearance of the building. That is a view of the existing rear courtyard area. A view from the corner of Jolks Lane across the countryside looking back towards the firs. And you can check, sorry, it was a very wet day this morning. And you can just see the top of the outbuilding adjacent to it. And that's a view from the back of the site of the firs looking across back toward, towards Jolks Lane. So as you can see, the proposal would be seen in longer views from the countryside area to the north and west of the site. You can just see from the edge of that photo there is some screening. Um, so the applicant has made the point there is some screening to the rear of the site which would limit the views um, of the door extensions from the rear. However, to go back to the front, the two dormers, particularly at the front, would be very visible from Park Corner Lane, uh, which has views over open countryside. And despite the existence of the landscape screening, it's not considered that this, these would sufficiently outweigh the harm that would result from the proposed changes to the building. The nearest neighbouring properties are Park Farm Stables, situated to the south of the site, and Tudor House to the west, on the corner of Jogs Lane. These properties are situated some 95 and 110 metres away respectively, and as such there would be no loss of amenity to the joining properties in terms of loss of privacy or overlooking. Recommendation, the proposal would result in an inappropriate increase in the scale, form and footprint of the original building, and this would have an unacceptable impact on the country, countryside, contrary to the NPPF, CP1, CP3, CP11 report strategy, and the borough design guide, and is recommended for refusal. Thank you. Thank you for that. So, first speaker we have then is Patrick around the planning agent. If you'd like to come forward. I'm having read through the officer's report by this application, I think the following comments can be made. Relevant policy to my mind is uh, CP11 as it relates to development in the countryside and the borough design guide, both of which lend support uh, for small scale extensions uh, to residential buildings in the countryside. The caveat is that such extensions do not have an unacceptable in impact on the countryside and in order to achieve that aim, um, guidance states that one, development should not lead to excessive encroachment or expansion away from the original buildings and two, should not result in inappropriate increases in the scale or form or footprint of the original building. For me, the three words there are unacceptable, excessive and inappropriate, none of which to my mind relate to this proposal which, as acknowledged in the report, amounts to a volume increase of just 12.5% over the volume of the existing building. The report says the proposed doors are out of keeping with the style of the existing building, uh, but that would seem to be a very subjective statement, or it could be argued they could be 
very much in keeping um, with the rural nature of the building and the area generally. It must be remembered that the lawful use of the first floor is for residential accommodation, albeit as an annex. But there should be a reasonable expectation um, that the building can be extended. The building is subservient to uh, the main house, the ridge is set three metres lower, and this application <coughs> would not affect that relationship. The space has been used by the applicant's son um, in an ancillary manner to the main house, but is expected to revert to the applicant's increasingly frail mother. And this creates um, a need for the additional space afforded by the dormers to enable more appropriate manoeuvring space for wheelchair um, and floor space for other mobility aids as necessary. It is acknowledged in the officer's report that the main house does have a secluded private room amenity area, which is within easy reach of the annex for the able body. But the terraced area proposed to the annex would mean that um, the applicant's mother could access the outside without having to navigate a set of stairs and changing ground levels. We know that the parish council stated no objection to the application and that there were no neighbour objections. Whilst that does not necessarily make the application acceptable, one would expect that if unexpectable harm was identified, um, the parish council would at least object. I don't think that the officer's report emphasises the, sub the substantial boundary screening um, and secluded nature of the property, which members will have noted on their visit. I think this is important because the test is whether the proposal would have an unacceptable impact on the countryside. And for us, the scheme is neither unacceptable, excessive, or inappropriate. Thank you. Okay. Next, next we have um, Councillor Gary Callum. location and those of you who are on a site visit will have seen. Uh, in no way does it overlook our impact on any of the other houses in the area. Not one resident objected to this planning application nor did the parish council or myself as the borough councillor. Uh, not shown on the documentation but re referred to by the case officer was Park Farm Stables. There are four properties close to that property um, which were fields not long ago, yet they've all been allowed to develop and evolve with massive roof structures and whatever, yet they've all been passed by uh, the planning process in this council. Um, if one was to look at this retrospectively as an enforcement application, the decision the enforcement policy would have to look at is harm. And would this extension cause any harm? And the reality is it, it wouldn't. As I see it, the PA meets, meets all the criteria of the borough design guide and all it does is create decent living accommodation for the applicant's elder <coughs> mother by providing better headroom via dormers instead of existing valid windows along with a raised terrace which fits comfortably with the guidance within the borough design guide. The summary highlight, highlights a key point. The annex is existing planning permission for residential use and is currently being used by the applicant's son and he now wishes to upgrade it to accommodate his elderly mother. Um, this council faces serious financial pressures, meaning its ability to fully care for the elderly in the community is a near impossible task and the council recognises the need for families to give as much support to their elderly relatives as they can and this planning application is designed to exactly do that. It takes all the pressure of the council and should be both welcome in financial and human terms. An elderly member of a community in the care of the family should be applauded and supported. It is a role model for which we should all be striving for within this council. I actually recently signed an online petition, part of the text the government minister in charge said it's up to families to look after elderly parents. And that's really the whole solution and in some cases it's simply not possible. Here is a case where the Council's own visions on the penny principles of looking after the vulnerable and to improve the quality of life for everyone can be taken a step forward. 
by approving this planning application. If the council is minded to refuse it or the committee, it would not, however, show the council in a particularly good light, and a subsequent appeal would probably be successful. I would only earnestly ask the planning committee to support this planning application, which is very simply designed to ensure an elderly member of the community gets the best care that only a family can provide in a safe, comfortable and suitable accommodation. Thank you. Okay. okay. Before I open up to members, could you just give me some clarification on what CP11 actually says, please? Okay, CP11 is a... The mic on CP11 of the core strategy states that development should not lead to excessive encroachment or expansion of development away from the original buildings or in the case of residential extensions, result in an inappropriate increase in the scale, form, or footprint of the original building. I can also quote the borough design guide. Oh, please. Yes. Section 8.54, relating to extensions and additions in the countryside, states that extensions may be permitted provided that the scale, form, and footprint does not have an unacceptable impact on the countryside. Thank you. Maybe what way? Maybe Michelle. Based on what you just said, Rosie, are you basing your, all of your assumptions on the 505 and the increase to the 568, therefore giving us 12%? <coughs> Sorry. No, that was just an illustration because obviously sometimes when it's in a countryside location, we will use volumes as an indicator. It is more the actual physical change to the external appearance, the bulkiness, but for, for getting the appearance at the moment we're just talking about a 12 percent increase in the actual footprint sorry in the actual volumetrics of the building that that's what we're talking about yes that's correct yeah. Sure. I'd like to reiterate what uh, Gary Cowan said and what Wayne has said. 12% is not very much. It doesn't seem like much of a change. And the terrace is necessary for a frail elderly mother to be able to get around and have a place that's amenity that she can actually access. And at this point, we're having more and more problems trying to take care of elderly relatives. And some family doing this should be applauded, not given a hard time. I think we should approve this. Chris? Um, I think the report says that um, there was an alternative to the terrace that the elderly relative could use in that group. Um, I did notice that when I was out on site. Um, I only found out that the um, applicant wished to use it for, for his elderly <coughs> as a result of an informal discussion when I revisited the site and to do my site visits. So I would reiterate, no supporting information or justification was provided with the original submission of the planning application <coughs> to explain who was going to use um, the ancillary accommodation. Um, it's, uh, it's understood it will remain as ancillary, but as I said, under the certificate of lawful existing use, um, it was identified that the son was using it. Um, I did ask the um, applicant um, if he, how mobile his mother was, and he did reply that she was mobile and that she would have no difficulty in getting up the stairs to the first floor accommodation. Thank you. Chris, can you come back? Just on a different point, the, um, the roof lights has planning consent in effect because the certificate of lawful existing use, because it's been there for 10 years, is that correct? Roof lights would be classed as an operational development and they had been there for more than four years. So by the time the actual certificate of lawful existing use came in to demonstrate it being used as ancillary residential accommodation, they were trying to prove the ten year use. So by by that very nature the roof lights were already immune from any enforcement action and they'd been there for that so length of time. If you were just looking at this uh, as a new building, would you be objecting to the roof lights? I think we have to look at what's before us at the moment, and the proposal is for the dormer extensions and the raised terrace area. Um, I don't think it would be appropriate to comment on the roof lights um, 
can, if, they, if it had come in at that stage uh, as an application now, because they're already there. Members of Ellen Wayne, Wayne. I don't know who said it, but I would like to get a second opinion on the view that if this went to appeal and an inspector's view on this, because I'm, I'm struggling at the moment. 12% increase. I did go on the site visit. And for some dormers, as you've seen in the plan, plus that extension at the back, I think it would be only reasonable. If my mother was living there and she had her own terrace rather than going in the, the son's terrace, son's and ciliary garden, I would prefer her to go in her own terrace area. So I don't see there's a major issue with it. Chair, yeah, thank you. Um, the officer recommendation, of course, was, was to refuse, and, and clearly we have to look at whether or not it would be appealed and the likelihood of success. So uh, that recommendation is in that context. But of course, I couldn't second guess what an inspector would do at appeal, so I couldn't guarantee that it wouldn't be a refusal would not be overturned by an inspector. Sure. Keep a thread of the 12% in the, in the area. I mean, I don't know if you've been there, but it's, it's a very isolated area. You know, and I fully appreciate CP11. You know, I live in the thick of it, and you know, I represent a ward that is mainly protected by CP11. But I do think there needs to be um, consideration made to the harm that it's making on the surrounding area, and I didn't see any there last Friday. Chair, it is um, an additional volume on an outbuilding which is um, supposedly um, subordinate to the main dwelling, which I think is, is part of um, what the report is saying. But 12%, 12 is not significant in any case. Uh, significant usually means at least around half, and 12% is not that high. I do. I hear what you say, and I acknowledge the 12% increase. I think we we should remember that it is a detached outbuilding. It was always. When it was approved back in 2003, it was larger than the original replacement building there, but it was approved as an outbuilding subservient to the main house. Um, by virtue of the fact that it is an outbuilding, it does not benefit from permitted development rights. So these changes could not be done under permitted development. Thank you. Mary, you wanted to um... I was just wondering if it would... Oh, sorry, a lot of shouts. <laughs> um, I just wonder perhaps if um, members could understand that 12% doesn't sound very much on its own, but presumably there are rules in place, and if you gave 12% here and 8% there, is, is there a rule that there is some leniency with regard to percentages either way? It, it doesn't sound as if there is, that's why you've refused it. It's, presumably there are rules in place about exactly what's permitted and what isn't. Is that, is that right? When you're looking at a countryside location, there is some um, degree of leniency. It's not quite as strict as green belt. But I think we actually need to focus on the changes to the external appearance and what impact those traumas will have on the external appearance of that outbuilding. It will quite significantly change it from a relatively low level subservient building to a, to a building that looks more like a house. In with a much more urbanised appearance that's not in keeping with the countryside location. We all, we've all said it's in an isolated, down an isolated lane with large gaps and open fields separating the properties. Thank you. Okay. Okay, I'd just like to come in with a couple of questions myself. You did just touch on that, that um, the original building was increased to get where we are today. So I was just asking the question, do you have those figures? Be one question. Um, my second one, am I right in thinking it's not a planning consideration who is going to live in the ancillary um, building? And then I just want to make a comment on what's already been said. There are applications that we would turn down that you cannot see. They're in great big estates.